Going for the switch of play beautifully into the space. Look at that. We've got two right backs overlapping. Great little run there. Chips it into the middle. And it's the likes of... Oh my god! Saved onto the post. Well, um... They, they carved us open. <laughs> He's doing his medical. I'm so, so excited and keen for what this potential superstar can do for the side when going forward. Of course, I think he fits the system. He suits what I'm looking for. Well, you can get wrecked, son. Well, two goals and two shots in like two minutes. It's catastrophic. Our uh, FA Cup run could be coming to an end at home. When you're when you're 18 or 19 years of age, however old this kid is, and you step up for your team and you do that, that is when you know you have that clutch gene in your flipping DNA. Hey, all my people, how you doing? I hope you're having a goddamn great day. Welcome back to the channel. Now, I did oh, I, I realize I forgot to go through the statistics at the end of the last episode. Obviously, I like to do it at the end of every year, just going through some of the stats and whatnot. I forgot, but anyway, we will also be talking about a few players that I have transfer listed, we will discuss that now, um, and maybe a potential signing or two that do tend to come through the door. So, let's look at some of the stats. Leading the way with 14 goals and 15 assists, Conor Gallagher, he has been absolutely magical. And uh, another player that I'm very impressed with, well two other players really, is um, Madger with 14 goals, unexpectedly, none of them coming in the Premier League. As well as Jared Branthwaite with 11 goals. Four in the Champions League, four goals in, in, in six games, and seven in the Premier League. Now, I think every single one of those have come from a corner. So, <laughs> oh, we have got an absolute unit on our hands with uh, the likes of Jared Branthwaite. Sanko and McNamara both with nine. To be fair, McNamara, nine goals in ten games, and not to mention two assists as well. Incredible. Our strike force is... is Oh, it's good. It's really good. And that's why we are currently first in the Premier League. Um, we've got the likes of Haraldson with 5-5. Five and five, Not too bad, to be honest. Um, Matt O'Reilly, 3 goals and 10 assists. I thought he was having quite a bad year. In terms of like the, the goal output, of course, he did score a brace in the last game versus Spurs. But it's not that bad. Uh, like Maybe I've just been extra hard on him because of the incredible first season that he had. But nonetheless, I've been... I've been proven wrong. He, he's low-key been doing a, a lot of good things for us. Um, of course, Jed Wallace with 15 assists, tied with the, the likes of Conor Gallagher, but three goals. Uh, Cullen, three and three, not too bad. So, so two and two, of course, he's the more DM of the, the double pivots. Um, James McAtee, though, he could have more goals, especially after that Villa game. Oh my God, he missed sitter after sitter after sitter. But two goals and seven assists, not too bad for the young man himself. And then, of course, you've got Kuto. Now, these stats alone tell you why I am converting him into being a potential right-back slash wing-back. Because going forward, his outlet is shocking, it's shoddy, it's not great. But we have gotten two assists with him being in that left-back or right-back area. So, therefore, I think it's a solid move as well. Now, depending on who gets sold and who comes in and who, you know, Martin McNamara, of course, James McNamara's brother... 19 years of age, can play as a DM or potential sense back. If we do sell the likes of Ballard, I wouldn't be opposed to cutting this man's, you know, loan spell short and bringing him back in to the side. That could be a, a solid move um, and maybe giving him some game time as well. He could develop quite well with his brother. And of, of course, I do understand it would help quite a bit with the morale of the two. So that could be an option as well. Um... But now let's, let's let's talk about uh, a few of these players that I have put on the transfer list. One being Brandon Williams. He's only he's only been given five games, especially now that I'm starting to use Kuto as a potential fullback replacement. He's not going to get as much game time as what I would have thought. Five games and he's made very little impact in those games whatsoever. So you know I, I'm thinking put him on the transfer list. If we can get a good offer for him, I will accept it. Another one is Redevolt. He's had one appearance so far this season, and that was in a throwaway Champions League game. So, again, it's one of those situations where he's been a good servant to the club, but I think him being on the bench is frustrating both him and me in, in terms of the financial aspects of it, because there is a good asset that we have sitting on our bench that is potentially losing value as well. And then finally, we've got the likes of uh, Daniel Ballard. Last season, 
look, last season he had his ups and downs, more downs than what they were ups, but the season before that he was incredible. Maybe this level is just too high for him, so maybe shifting him out the door, getting some money back for him, and then looking to reinvest that back into the squad, that could be more of a a, a good play to try and, you know, pursue. Um, but otherwise, we've got, and I've promoted a few of the, the youngsters from the academy, Sutton, Jensen, and Pedersen. All of them are also on the transfer uh, list. None of them are really going to be superstars or potential star players that we might be able to you know, grow and develop. So therefore, shifting them out the door, getting some money back for them could be a, a massive possibility. And I will say this, Bailey Peacock Farrell, he has been very, very, very patient on the bench. Hasn't received a, a single minute of, of game time so far. So we will be seeing him in this episode. Okay, so that is the calendar at hand. It is one away game to Manchester United before a home cup tie versus Watford, and that is where Bailey Peacock Farrell will be making his debut. We might have another game, depending on if we, you know, get through the, the FA Cup and, and all that good stuff. So, I wouldn't say ending off at home to Brighton is a definite, but it might be, depending on how the Watford game does go. But yes, three confirmed games so far in the month of January, plus potentially one or two signings, like I said earlier. So, in terms of the signings, now, I've got the likes of Dara O'Shea. I was really impressed with him when we did play Bernie in the last episode. And of course, he is a former baggy himself. So maybe bringing him back, maybe he could be the natural Dan Ballard replacement. Of course, he can fill in as a right back. And that would also lead me to believe a potential um, left back as well. But at the same time, I've had this kid on my radar for quite a while. Edward Wood can play as a left back or a right back. He is left footed, so I will mainly use him in that left-hand department. He's got some really good badges, 74 overall, 21 years of age. He could be a, a really good, cheap option to maybe replace one of the, the players that do leave. Um, and then finally, we've got this man right here, Fabian Mullen. Um, I wanted to try and get him in before I started the episode, but I, I botched the, 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 the negotiations because I didn't have enough money. I only have 15 million to spend, and therefore I need to sell to potentially buy. So. Fabian Mullen, of course, he is a striker, he is French, he is 20, he is 77 overall. But I do think that maybe converting him into a left midfielder, having him as more of an inside forward on that left-hand side in certain moments, interchanging with um, McAtee on and off the bench, I think he could be a very solid option. So he is going to be the number one target for the January window, when obviously I'm allowed to renegotiate and whatnot, and hopefully I've sold a few players. Um, but yes, he is the number one target. I think it's a step up for him as well, going from Mainz to the Premier League firstly. Bundesliga to the Premier League is a step up. Mainz to, to West Brom, also a step up. And of course, we are in the Champions League and we are building um, to uh, much bigger and better things, you could say. Um, but I'm very, very, very excited to potentially sign this kid. So hopefully, like I say, hopefully we can make a few, sell, uh, a few sales. Hopefully we can make a few signings as well. But let's hop on straight to the Manchester United game. A game at OT, it's always a cracker. Last time we played them at the Hawthorns, we ended up winning 3-2 Onana with a, a massive blunder. Let's not forget that. We will remind them always and forever. Amen. But obviously Man United, they're not doing that well so far this season. They're only on 22 points and we're on 47. So, you know, we're, we're doing a hell of a lot better. They're in 12th place as well, which is quite scary. I can see why they wanted to hire me. Um, yeah, they, they, they wanted to hire me in the summer. And I said, nope, I'm good, thanks. Great save, great save, Woodman. Okay, well, off the bat, Mason Mount testing the goalkeeper. Um, it hasn't been a great start. I mean, they've, they've clogged the passing lanes. They've been very good at breaking up my offensive play. Martinez can't get close, but Onana got, oh, well, he gets gloves to it. Uh, 21 minutes in, we've got our first attack, and it ends up in a corner kick, which O'Reilly whips in, and it's claimed by the likes of Andre Onana. Jays, okay. More of that, please. I must say, this Man United team isn't bad. They're like, it, it's got some really good players in it, which is weird that they're doing so badly then. Okay, well, 1-0 to United, and um, Openda opens the scoring. Okay, 25 minutes in, not too bad, not too shabby, but we need to do a lot better. Stay central. Liverpool are drawing with Bournemouth, which is crazy in itself. Police Street almost running into Branthwaite. Police Street driving baseline. And it's a great save. 
It's 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 a really good save. Jays. Haraldson plays it in there. Oh, we've gotten the pass, and there we go. Mo Sanko in on goal and puts it straight into the chest of Onana. What are you doing, mates? That's a wayward pass, and it's a bad pass too. We are going to make some changes. Uh, that that Sanko misses is, is atrocious. Uh, McNamara will be coming on. Jed Wallace will also be coming on. He was asking to play, but I decided not to go with him. Um, I'm thinking Kuto on for Haraldson. Maybe he can offer a little bit more down that right flank. And yeah, those are the changes we're going to make for now. McNamara. Little chip over the top. He's found Conor Gallagher. Conor Gallagher, bottom corner. Things you like to see. That's a great, great, great assist from the young man into the, the veteran of the side. He's got 15 goals and 15 assists now. Keep that in mind. That is absolutely fantastic. As the number 10 too. It's all about focus. Concentration. Keep the focus levels up, boys. Concentrate as much as possible. James McNamara, he's he's beaten the, the press. He's into the space. And he just puts it straight past Andre Onana. Should we start James McNamara? Honestly, it, it is becoming one of those things where he might have to just start having, you know, a run of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games in a row of just starting. Because every time we brought him off the bench, he's been absolutely electric. Going for the switch of play beautifully into the space. Look at that. We've got two right backs overlapping great little run there chips it into the middle and it's the likes of oh my god saved onto the post chips it up back post and it's headed straight at onana and man united clear it and that is going to be a 2-1 win for the baggies fantastic second half display there was fight there was drive there was there was precision with the attacking everything was going for us mcnamara should we start him I've just had a whole host of different notifications saying that um, we had a few players come back from their loans. So, Joshua Bourne, he hasn't really worked out to the player that I thought he would. He, he hasn't grown at all either, which is very, very disappointing. I mean, we signed him as a free agent. Um, but yeah, it, it hasn't really been the, the, the type of signing that I would have thought. Uh, Will Neal as well hasn't really grown, so I'm going to transfer list him. I mean, if we can get a pretty penny for some of these players, then so be it. We can... Look to try and reinvest it back into the team. Um, I'm giving them all the 40 plus um, squad numbers because I will be selling these players. It, it, it is a bit uh, annoying though because we signed them thinking that they were going to grow a lot more. The likes of Aiden Morley as well. And they, they haven't, which is, like I say, very annoying. So hopefully we can sell them, get some money and go and buy my, uh, my targets. Okay, Crystal Palace have expressed uh interest in the likes of brandon williams which is great so we're not going to get 19 million for him but i would like above his asking price which is around 15 million at, at the highest so let's say let's say 17 million start off at 17 and work your way down um but i do think we will be getting a whole host of different clubs coming in and inquiring about the the young or he's he's 26 actually but anyway, the young English player that can play on either flank. So, you know, keep that in mind, teams. Okay, we've got an offer here for Riedewald from Darmstadt. Now, this is something I'm quite happy to accept. 5.5 million. He's been a great servant to the club, but I think maybe him moving to Germany could be a great move for him. To be fair, he is 30 as well, so he needs to keep that in mind. We also have an offer from West Ham United. Now, I'm not going to, you know, hardball them either. I'm going to go 17 million as well. It's between West Ham and Crystal Palace, both London teams... Um, they can fight it out for the likes of Brandon Williams, and he can obviously, in the end, choose where he wants to go. Both clubs have come back immediately. The likes of Crystal Palace are prepared to pay 2.1 million more, so therefore we're going to accept that, and we're going to reject West Ham. Well, why are you being cheap, bro? Anyway, hopefully he can get the deal done, and then, just, just, just then, hopefully we can go ahead and sign this man right here, because that would be great. Okay, so for this Emirates FA Cup first... Well, it's not the first round, but it's our first round in the FA Cup. Um, I've rotated. Obviously, McNamara, Madger, Wallace, Kuto, um, Saar, and of course, new man Peacock Farrell will all be coming in. I actually need to change the fact that Lloyd Kelly is not the captain and Jed Wallace will be. But anyways, that is the team we're going to go with. Let's hop on straight into the game and hopefully progress in the FA Cup. Okay. Things are looking great for us, although it still has the score update of uh, Gift Auburn scoring for Wolves, which is a bit weird and a bit annoying. Um, but nonetheless, FA Cup time, so you like you like to see it. I'm uh, expecting a lot from the players that I have selected here. Obviously, we can't select other players, such as like the likes of Dan Ballard and, and Co. 
because they are either in negotiations with other teams or they are set to leave the club. And I don't really want to use players that aren't going to give 100% effort uh, for the team. So hence why I've made some changes and not most. Wallace links up nicely with the likes of Jan Kuto, who squares it. Okay, well, we've won ourselves a corner at least. 16 minutes gone by, and we've got a corner kick, and Jed Wallace to take it. Of course, the captain on Madge's forehead, and it's off the, the, the post, and thank you very much. We score off of uh, a lot of set-piece situations, so more times not opposition. If you give us a corner, or your goalkeeper makes a great save, make sure you're switched on, because we might most certainly score from the secondary um, set piece opportunity which is more times not a corner um, and it doesn't matter it can be the likes of a Jed Wallace taking it the the likes of a Branthwaite heading it in a Madger it could be a, a Conor Gallagher taking the set piece it doesn't matter man we are really really good with them and we have strong physical players that can definitely dominate in the air I see the back post oh it's a it's a great diving header to be fair <laughs> it's a great diving header that's one thing I do like about this uh, dual striker tandem formation. The one can go at the near post, the other one can go at the back post, and they are both offer equal aerial threat. Kuto this time drives a baseline, cuts it back, and it's a uh, headed wide. Okay, not too bad from McAtee. Great little ball here. Back post area, matches the. Oh my God, matches Mr. Header. How did you do that, mate? We we we've missed some absolute sitters now. We're, we're carving them open, they're frightened sense, but we're missing some crazy opportunities. Again, into Kuto. Kuto, he's picked up that back post area, and it's fired into McNamara, and it's a great save from Buk Buchanan? Bukeman? I don't know. Who, whoever the goalkeeper is, great save from him. Wallace to put it into the box. It's in a danger area, and, well, at least they've defended it well. Into the likes of Timber. Timber. Pops off a shot from distance and it's drifted just wide. I know that they have updated the, the Travella and, and all that stuff, but do you think that they may have nerfed it a bit too much? Or do you think it's a bit more realistic? You guys can let me know down below in the comment section. Um, because I think they, they may have done a little bit too much with it. This time, Jed Wallace slides it back to Maja, who's banged it in for his second on the day. And it's 36 minutes gone by. It could be 5-0. It, it really could be with the amount of chances we've missed. So... We need to score a few more, and then I'll be happy. Well, um, they they carved us open. <laughs> what the hell are my boys doing? We need to be. They've signed um Halga. I, I like him. He was a fantastic player to to have. Like what was in like FIFA 21 or something. Great great overall potential. I don't know if that's still really good, but. It's a good signing for, for, for Watford. Um, but yeah, 2-1. Great whipping from Halga. Oh my god. I really thought Kusa would have claimed that. <clears throat> and Barr, with a, a great equalizer. Also play with a real face. Young talents as well from Germany. Well, now it's, it's a real game on our hands. 2-2. There we go, McNamara, he's got the turn. He, he loves backing into the opposition players and just spinning him behind and using his, his uh, power to exploit them and therefore kill the goalkeepers with the one-on-ones. Love it. 3-2, just like that. Oh, McNamara driving at the opposition, centre back, beats him for pace, puts it across, and it's into the back of the net. 4-2, restoring our two-goal cushion. McNamara said, I've had enough of this. It's time to take this game by the scruff of the neck. Bang. Bang! Bang! And it's a hat-trick for Madja, and that is a three-goal lead, which means it's 5-2, and that also means, ha! Sim to the end. We don't need to play the rest of this game. And we ended up winning 6-2 on the day. We dominated possession. We did very well. Madja scored a fourth goal. So two for McNamara, four for Madja. Wow. Fantastic. Now onto the next game. Well, actually, maybe not onto the next game just yet. Let's make uh, the, those sales happen. Obviously, the likes of Brandon Williams. And let's go and sign Mullen. Well, there goes Rudevaltz. Fantastic servant to the club. Like I said, we signed him, what was it, like two or three seasons ago um, in the championship as a free agent. And he's done nothing but be a great player whenever he's played, whenever I've called upon him. So, so long, big boy. I hope uh, Germany's great. We have an offer for Dan Ballard. 12 million. I think that's fair, to be honest. But I'm going to ask for a little bit more. 
I mean, the more the merrier. 15 million from Leeds United. He could go back to the championship. To be fair, I think that is his level. He could get game time there as well. He could join up with the likes of Haksabanovic, Haksabanovic um, at Leeds. And uh, fair play to him. Oh, and here goes a big boy, Brandon Williams. Also, another great servant to the club. When did we sign him? Was it like two seasons ago? And to be fair, or was it last season? I think he's had a season and a half at the baggies. It hasn't really worked out. Last season, he was okay. He was used a bit more. But it hasn't, again, it hasn't worked out. I think Kuto is the, the better option for the attacking fullback that I'm looking for. And uh, we get a, a decent amount of money for him. I think we only signed him for like four or five million. So... A good uh, profit made, excellent deal done, A plus or A, and um, now we can go make our signing. So there you have it guys, our new signing walking through the door, he signed the dotted line, he's crossed the I's, he's crossed the T's, dotted the I's, he's doing his medical, I'm so so excited and keen for what this potential superstar can do for the side when going forward, of course I think he fits the system, he suits what I'm looking for, and again, he should be starting in the very near future. As you can see here, we get, well, we, we signed him for around 18 million. It was a little bit more than what I had anticipated. I anticipated around 12 to 14. So they, they weren't budging, which frustrated me. But anyway, 18 million got the deal done over the line. 15 would have been the best possible deal. So I don't mind paying 3 million more. 77 overall, he is a striker, but we are going to convert him into that left midfielder. And he is going to compete with the likes of McAtee for that left-hand side. Okay, so he is going to wear the number 18. Of course, it is going to take around 100 weeks to get him to that final four. And now, of course, that is going to be a left midfielder. So it is going to take a little while, but I do think that he does have the attributes and capabilities to play out wide um, and specifically down that left-hand side. We have a transfer offer for Will Neal. Okay, well, to be fair, you're welcome to leave, buddy. Uh, obviously, also signed on a free. He is set to go. I will also say this. Uh, the likes of Newcastle United came in for Dan Ballard. It wasn't a realistic move. He, he's recently played for the likes of Sunderland. So, again, you don't play for Sunderland and Newcastle United. It's just weird. I have seen some YouTube channels that do this. It's, Anyways. Um, but in terms of the, new, uh, the, the Leeds United deal, 12 million. They didn't want to budge too much. So... To be fair, just get him out the door and, you know, make him happy, make us happy. We've got 12 million and we can look to reinvest it back into the team. Okay, and there you have it. Dan Ballard leaving the club after a, a good solid two-year stay, maybe three years. I, my, my mind's a bit uh, hazy. But again, he was a good servant to the club, but I think we've just outgrown him and his skill sets and his capabilities. Okay, so heading into the Brighton game, we've got... Brighton in 15th place, which is not great for them. Um, three losses in their last five. One win and, of course, one draw. They do tend to play some good gag-impressing um, football, which is great. Conce is the man that I need to watch out for, which is not great. They've got some good players here, though. Joao Pedro, Correa, very pacey um, front two, you could say. Um, Romagnoli as well. Merlin, that they must have signed from Newcastle. They've got Manu Kone on the bench, Adingra, who I've always said is really good, uh, Neuhaze as well, very good. Um, they, they've got some good players here, they're just not using them correctly, I guess. And of course, Samien, so we know all about him from, from season number one. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough game, even though they're in 15th and they're not in the best run of form. It's going to be a tough game, we need to be very vigilant, very much awake and on it, in order to get the three points. Now, the one change I have made is the likes of James McNamara. He is going to be getting a solid run of you know five to ten games of just starting game in game out and i want to see if he can handle the pressure of the premier league because obviously if he can score goals i'm going to start him. I'm going, I'm going to give him a lot more opportunities if he doesn't it's okay back to the bench you'll get like those impact sub minutes um here and there when required and then, then you'll more or less revert back to the likes of sanko but for now I'm going to give this kid a chance because I think he is that special. Brighton seems to be kicking things off here at the Hawthorns. It is a home game. James, I'm expecting big things, big boy. So don't let me down. We also have Mullen on the bench, guys, by the way, um, which is great. It's fantastic. I'm very excited to see what he can do. So McAtee, if you're not on it, I've got a player that I've just brought in for around 18 mil that will definitely look to try and take your spot. A little chip over the top here, and it's Haraldson's come away with the ball still, and it's a 1-0 lead in five minutes. We've done well, we've pressed him aggressively, we've won the ball back, and we've scored a goal. Fan, damn, that's a great way to start off the game. What do we have here? It's a great cross, but look who's there. Our 87 overall flipping right back. 
Connor Bradley. Great ball between the lines into James McNamara. He's running at pace. Conser can't catch him. And neither can the goalkeeper touch that ball because it's a 2-0 lead inside 20 minutes. Thank you very much. James McNamara, you might be starting a whole lot more, son. Great save. Oh my god, Woodman. I was I was so focused on just trying to keep them out, force those those long shot opportunities. And the, the ball's coming straight back at us. The Zobi's mad, you can see it. His team are starting to play a lot more aggressive now. And uh, just firing shots straight over the bar. Okay, but they are inviting a lot of pressure. I am inviting pressure now, and I don't like this. That That's exactly why I said uh, we were not hanging on to the ball enough. We're not doing enough. And it's now 2-1, and the momentum is somewhat in their favor. Jeez. Well, you can get wrecked, son. Trying to be too clever. <laughs> Trying to be too clever. <sighs> that one pains me. It's always going to happen when you play out from the back, but that one pains me so much. I'm going to be real with you guys. It's half time, and I just want to play Mulan. That I, I'm sorry. That's that's what I want to do. I want to play him. He needs to come on and, and play some some minutes here. Um, he's going to be the only sub I do make. I know he does have a minus three, but eventually once he starts playing a lot more in that left hand side position he will uh, obviously look to not have that minus three um i am going to also bring on uh wallace for heraldson I, I think look it's 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 a bit harsh of me you know taking them off at half time but I, I don't think though the wider areas have been as good and we haven't been able to retain the ball we've lost the ball quite a bit in those wider areas so unfortunately it needs to be had it needs to be made if that makes sense I'm sorry that, that that that's not a foul. That is not a foul. That's a, that's a that's a shoulder to shoulder. That's a 50-50. You've given them an easy goal here, referee. I hope you know this. Thank God. Brad, it Sanko on O'Reilly off. Kuto on, Bradley off. Okay, if we lose this game, I'm going to lose my mind. We've bottled a 2-0 lead and given them a 3-2 flipping lead here. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Wallace slides it into Sanko. Sanko collects it nicely, takes a little ball roll and puts it in the back of the net. 3-3 and we've got 17 to go. God damn it. I don't know what happened between the 20th minute and... And, and the 70th minute, because we have been shocking as hell. Even that pass is directly behind Sanko. I'm just really grateful that he's got some, um, I don't know, so just a great overall to be able to score. Otherwise, more times than not, it's missing. So it's 3-3. Can we get back in the game? We need these three points. I can't believe I've bottled a 2-0 lead versus 15th place Bryson. Things need to improve here, gents. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of heads rolling. Well done. Good punch. Gives it in. Great ball. Into the captain. Jen Wallace! You, you absolute idiots. You imbecile. Hit that with more conviction, mate! You better, you better cross this in like you've never crossed anything in your life. Jesus. Back post. Sanko! My hero, my absolute golden child, you are amazing. Time and again, you save me. That would have been the most embarrassing thing I've, I think I've done so far in, in FC24. Giving up a two-goal lead. Actually, no, I've done more embarrassing things like lose to Southampton and stuff. But giving up a two-goal lead to, to this lot is, is horrendous. Great header, well-timed, beautiful. I don't know why the goalkeeper didn't come out and claim it, but Sanko, great position, great whip from my captain, Jed Wallace. Okay, now we got to just goddamn defend, and there you have it! 4-3 winners, did not play well whatsoever. Th there was a hat-trick for João Pedro. Great. 
Why are you celebrating? You goddamn lost the game, mate. Um, but yes, let's find out if we have our final FA Cup game. Okay, so our final game of the episode is going to be in the FA Cup up against Everton. Luckily, it is a home draw, which is fan damn -tastic. Again, I have rotated where I felt it's ne needed and required. I'm giving Newland his first start. I was not impressed with him, to say the very least, when we played Brighton. So I'm hoping he can, you know, display a bit more. I'm hoping at least. Um, and then obviously I've made the, the rotations where required. Okay, Everton to kick things off here at the Hawthorns now. I will also say this, it's not the biggest uh, requirement for me to try and, you know, win the FA Cup. Obviously I'm going to try, but I'm, I'm, I'm pushing for, for, for the Premier League to be honest. So if we can, we will. If we can't, we, we won't. Great. You know what? Immediately, first few touches, I'm liking him already. Mullen, you, you, you need to do more for me, big boy! And he can also be an aerial threat, which is fantastic. And it's a great save. Well done, Peacock Farrell. Well freaking done, mate. Uh, getting both hands to a nice, secure pair of gloves, and he's forced out for a corner, and here we go. They've put in a good area, and... That's not great. Pablo! Pablo scored. Well done, Pablo. What in the... Oh, I don't know, man. Pablo scored again. Well done, Pablo. Well, two goals and two shots in like two minutes. It's catastrophic. Our uh, FA Cup run could be coming to an end at home. And it's not even a weakened side. Or we are playing a weakened side. But we're not playing with, with terrible players here. We're playing with really good players. Like, there's Timber. Like, what the hell? Okay, it's time to make some changes. Um, Kuto off for Bradley. Branthwaite on for Saar. That'll definitely sure up that area. I'm going to bring on O'Reilly. And again, I'm going to be subbing off Haraldson. I'm doing that, maybe? Yep, cool. There's a... Five changes at the break. I, I, I do... Even though I've said I don't really care too much about the FA Cup, I do want to try and win it. And if just say, for instance, we bomb out of the 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 Champions League and we don't get that first spot for, for the Premier League, then again, it's another season where we haven't, you know, achieved a trophy. At least with this, if we can, you know, progress slowly, slowly, it might it might be the a source of a trophy. There we go, Connor Bradley this time, former Liverpool kid. He's banged it in. And I, I, I may have just missed that, but it said something about Bernardo Silva. I, I would assume he's been transferred somewhere else. Um, right now, I don't care too much. We are still a goal down and we need to come back. But so far, so good. Great ball over the top here. Mullen's made a run. McNamara's making a central run. Mullen fakes the shots. Comes inside. Pops it off on his right. And it's straight into the gloves of Omlin. Well done. We've got 19 or so minutes to try and rescue this FA Cup run. Venetia Sosa this time, oh my god, that is a big time player. Big game players make big time plays, fantastic. God, what a hit, he's absolutely thumped that top corner. Oh, O'Reilly, you, you absolute beaut. He's given it into Mullen, Mullen shifts it back onto his left. Oh my god, he gets taken down like an absolute, what the hell is that? Okay, well at least McNamara can take it, because he's right footed, he's an 81 free kick taker. Um, I want to actually see if Mullen could maybe take it, I know he is left footed, but... Wow, he shifted really well to get it onto his, his left foot there. Um, okay, I just want to see McNamara quickly. Okay, and of course, what is Mullen? Oh my god, never mind. Okay, so we need to go with a bit more height. We bend it up, down, and around. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go that much. That should be enough. Bang! Oh my god, and he's pulled it in the back of the net. Freaking McNamara, you absolute madman. That is... That is incredible. That that is a free kick and a half. Just in between the oh. Just just oh beautiful. That is that is precision. That is precision. When you're when you're 18 or 19 years of age, however old this kid is, and you step up for your team and you do that, that is when you know you have that clutch gene in your flipping DNA. Okay, there you have it. 3-2 winners, a massive comeback in the second half, a fantastic frenetic free kick from the youngster, James McNamara. We are going to be bringing his brother back from his loan at Bristol, and he is going to be the fourth choice centre-back, but you know what? 
Absolute scenes. That free kick went in and this crowd absolutely erupted. You are my star boy. Okay, so just before the deadline ends, we are going to bring back Martin McNamara. Of course, James's older brother, slightly. I think he is slightly older than him. Let, let's, let's just check. He's 19, Martin, and uh, James. James is 17. So yes, the younger brother is the more talented, but Martin, he's the... He's, he's an exciting prospect, you can also say. So, for his... Um, for his number, we're going to give him number 34, of course. James is 35, oh, 33, and he's going to be 34. Uh, let's have a look at the development plan. Of course, he has gone up three overalls, which is fan damn -tastic. We're going to make him a sweeper. He's, he is right-footed, also, just like his brother. Um, but yes, that, that'll be the, the only real transfer business that we do um, for the rest of this transfer window. So we are going to end things off right here, right now. If you guys can, hit that like button down below. That would be absolutely appreciated. Subscribe if you are new. And of course, until tomorrow, or the... Next time, next weekend I should say, I will see you guys later. I'm out.